how would I describe the cost of living in Spain? Um, the first thing I want to say is I've talked this from different people. Uh, some are Spanish, some are from other parts of the world, and some are British pensioners. Um, one of the things that gets overlooked is when you take the UK and Spain side by side, is they're not the same. Um, let me give an example, like La Mata. I don't actually need a car if I was living on a pension to live in La Mata. The supermarkets deliver, the, um, there's a local butcher, there's local bakers, there's, you know, there's a little supermarket. It's got the infrastructure to live there without needing to actually um, come out the town if you didn't want to. So the point being is you don't need um, to have a car. But on top of that, the bus service is very good and it's linked through, I mean, you get for the bus from La Mata into Torrebeca, Torrebeca, yeah, you can pick up the bus uh, to Madrid. Oh, that's nice, you just cut up. Naughty. Um, but the, but the, the thing is, things work quite well here. I mean, it's like the bin collection, it, it's, it's not, a rigmarole. I find in the UK the council seem to do as much as they can to avoid their job. Um, here you don't really get the, the sort of pictures I see on Facebook relating to some of the areas around the UK where they've got the bins overflowing because the council didn't collect the one week so then the bins are still getting used funny enough. Um, what you find here is even if people dr drop a sofa like here, like here, there's, um, you can't see it, but there's three large tins of paint here where obviously they're empty contain paint containers, they'll take them away. Obviously somebody's had their house painted and they're getting rid of the, the tins, should they take them away? That, that's an argument whether it's domestic waste or um, commercial waste, but the point is they still get on with it. Well, you find with the council simply just wash their hands of responsibility in the UK. Um, they are trying to curb some of this, by the way. They do ask people to report people. They catch people fly tipping and things, which is a little bit bigger than a couple of paintings. Um, but generally, things flow. And that's one of the reasons that it becomes quite a good place to live. Um, you've got the fact that you can live on about seven or 800 euros a month, even if you're renting. Some people will say, well, that, they couldn't do it on that, but that's to do with this, their standard of living in choices. But you can actually do it on about 800. Um, I mean, you're looking at rent for a two bedroom apartment somewhere between three and 400 a month on the coast here. Um, if you move a little bit inland, you might find something even a little bit cheaper. You're looking at the fact that your annual equivalent of a council tax is 200 and something euros a year and not a thousand plus but on top of that if you don't own the property guess what the landlord pays it so the point being is there's a lot of things that go in your favor one of the downsides is obviously medical cover because if you're not a retiree you got to pay for private insurance but then again I pay private insurance costing 120 a year uh, sorry, 129 pounds a month, 129 euros a month, sorry. Um, but that's for the whole family, and it should stay around that price long term. Because one of the things with private medical insurance is, is it seems to be based on what you initially paid. So the longer you pay in, the lower it seems to be, because the younger you are when you started. So from that point of view, the healthcare side isn't too bad. In fact, the healthcare is pretty bloody good here in, in Tolibeca. Even on the state, it gets uh, recognised with awards pretty much every year uh, internationally as a good hospital. The private healthcare I find very good here. Um, now, if you get down to brass taxes on things like eating, electric, and gas, etc., well, a lot of the property here don't bother with the gas. Um, if they do, they have it on uh, the butane tanks, and at the same time, I don't really know many people with that. Um, they might use it for winter heating, but with air conditioning uh, being more efficient now and having dual dual use in the sense of hot and cold, they don't bother. Uh, it's the same with cooking. I mean, you're not cooking all day, so there's no point being piped up to the gas gas system to pay a standing charge, which costs more than the gas that you're actually using. 
Um, so I find that now, now we're into the hotter months, it's starting to get warmer, the air conditioning isn't in um, heat mode or even in cool mode. A lot of the time you don't even need it on at all. The electric will shoot down to about 80 euros a month. That includes the electric water heater, the cooking, and any air conditioning that we use. If we have it on a couple, in a, a couple of hours just to take the heat off at certain times of the day. The water bill works out for somewhere between 20 and 30 euros a month. Um, now bearing in mind, we're a family of, family of four, so that seems quite cheap. And I know uh, Denise has had one of the problems with their water, water tank on the toilet system. But the thing is that that's run up a, a more bit more expensive bill, probably by about 20 euros. But once that's um, fixed, hers will come down. And living on her own, then obviously it's going to be a lot cheaper than ours. The one thing you've got to watch for is the tariffs, because you can get some of these deals where the tariffs have sort of fixed at a minimum of X amount per month, which means even if you don't use it, you're still going to pay that minimum, which could be 30 euros or something, even though you only actually use 15. So keep an eye on that, see see what deals are available and keep up to date with it because like anywhere, it's a competitive market. Um, cost of cars are expensive buying new, but personally, it's one of those things that if you can find somebody that's a re retired person that's had a car for a number of years and decided they don't need it or something that's the car to get um, because they are they're often the ones that have maintained it i do find a lot of the vehicles here the mechanics are a bit dubious sometimes or too often um so you may find a lot of people a bit like me a bit wary about having them do anything to it in case they make it worse um, because in the Philippines it's quite common for mechanics to actually stick some extra faults in for you to come back so that's something you've got to watch for there is some of the safeguards ain't there um, but we have mentioned about the customer book as well which is something that you can request so one of the things on those types of things is servicing, the quality of service for building work, new air conditioning, uh, what appliances to buy and stuff. I recommend things like YouTube, I recommend things like the forums, but be careful in the forums because they're often manipulated to people they like um, or they're related to. So you'll get a lot of uh, very positive reviews and then you find out that it's their brother, their sister, their cousin or whatever. Um, so you've got to take that sort of stuff into account. Um, what else is there? Yeah, so car insurance I find cheaper. It's about 230, 240 euros for, for this beast, um, which is, I think, 1.6, 2 litre CD. Uh, it's a diesel a turbo injection. Um, it, that's about, yeah, about two, 240, 260 euros a year and it insures the car, not the person. So the car itself is insured, which means it's insured for other drivers. It's also insured to drive into the UK or elsewhere in Europe um, for whatever, a month, three months, six. This is why I say I always check that because I could say one month now and then somebody will come back, but my insurance says we've got three months. So the point being is they do have insurance for Europe. They also have roadside cover because um, you have to have it in Spain. You will have to carry a safety kit in the car, which in, in fact, I'll do a video on that because that's something I really need to cover to help people uh, avoid getting any fines. Um, yeah, so I do find generally the cost of living is cheaper. And I've got to admit, we are going to be cutting back on our eating out. Um, I don't even want to say, we, we spend up to 400 euros a month on eating out. Um, but the thing is, myself and my wife are good cooks. Not that we're blowing around trumpet, but other people do like our food. So the point being is, um, I'd rather do a, another channel just on food. And me and my wife will do cooking and stuff on there. We'll stick it in here uh, with the Spanish dishes and stuff. Uh, but the point being is, you can eat relatively cheaply. If you're in these areas that have a local market, there's a lot of local produce. Um, you can buy a ridiculous amount of peppers, oranges, um, so fresh orange juice ain't a problem. I mean, we had 15 kilos of orange juice at one point because we went and got a couple of bags. And then Igor 
we'd been up to a farm working that day, so he brought us a couple of bags as well. Um, they cost virtually nothing, because I think the problem with the oranges a lot of the time is the minimum wage is higher than the value of the oranges. So, you know, the smaller farms, nobody's picking them, uh, from what I can see. And the same with lemons. There's a lot of lemons and stuff as well. But you get peppers, you get uh, a lot of vegetables and stuff at the markets, pretty cheap. But, yeah, generally, you can eat quite well and healthy pretty cheap here as well. The same with the fish. There's a lot of good fish. I'm, I'm going to get up early and I'm going to go to one of the places early in the morning for the fish. Uh, just so you can see the fish coming into port. I've got to find out what time they actually drop the ships off. I don't want to be sat there and going, oh, they're arriving four hours. But yeah, um, where we are, I find crime is pretty much non-existent. I know some people will say about the some of the issues uh, relating to pickpockets and stuff. Um, but I would say it's pretty much non-existent in the sense that I'm not having any things that worry about, you know, I can walk around here at three o'clock in the morning. Nobody's going to bother me. Um, you can, yeah, you're not looking at people assaulting people. I know some people have had some of these issues on some of the other estates. Let me move this. Let's get it right off. Um, but we generally don't have any of those sort of things happening here. Um, but I mean, of course, crime happens. But what I'm saying here is in the UK, a lot of Joe, Joe blogs gets dragged into crime in the sense of being mugged and whatever. Um, you may have some serious crime here. And if you watch the Guardia video, you'll see they're pretty well geared up for that sort of stuff. Um, but the, the point being is you're looking at um, the majority of crime isn't really affecting the average person because if it is serious crime, do you know what? They ain't bothered with me. I'm just going about my business. If they're attacking each other, that's fine. It's nothing to do with me. And the police will quite happily deal with that. So I don't really feel threatened here in any capacity. Now, don't don't think, oh, Matt gets a bit paranoid. No, I've, I've been in some colourful places in the world. Um, and I've never felt threatened here at all. Um... And some of the, I mean, some of the places I've been, which other people aren't, aren't supposed to travel as well, even there, a lot of the time, they ain't as bad as the media make out. But hey-ho. Um, but generally, nobody's going to bother you here. You know, you know, when you hear about the problems with the properties being robbed of all the furniture and stuff, it's because nobody's there. Um and the reason being is there's a lot of empty properties in Spain. It's over, I think it's over three three million empty properties throughout Spain. So the, pro, the point being is there's an enterprise there because there's so many of the things. Um, but beyond that, I would say you could live on 800 euros. You can live on 1,000 euros. It just depends on your standard of living. Um, I'm going to sit and work out my assessment if I can get ours to about 1,000 because, to be honest... Um, I'm looking for an easier lifestyle so I can spend more time with the family and I don't mind going from a 48, 40 to 80 hour a week down to 20 and then spending more time doing things like these videos, practicing my Spanish and doing other stuff in the local community. You know, I want to get involved with some of the uh, Red Cross and things like that, you know, doing, doing a bit more um bit more than I normally do. Um, I mean, not, not that I sit around all day. It's just that I'm normally sitting in spreadsheets doing calculations and stuff. But I would recommend it. Um, if you can get a sustainable income, you can adapt here anyway. You know, if, if, for example, you were living on 800 a month and for some reason you, you were sort of stretched and your apartment's coming up for rent um, and it's like, say, three 400 here. If you went inland, you could find like a one-bedroom um inclusive of electric and the electric and the um the water for about 250 upwards so there is always ways to save money if you had to um so i'll leave that with you thanks for watching